Hi everyone, this is Tara from Fashion Fast Lane, and today I wanted to talk more about defining your target market and why that's important. Um, so I have over 20 years of experience in the fashion industry from design, product development, production, sales and marketing. And I've done a lot of startup consulting for other fashion brands in the apparel and you know accessories, fashion, fashion accessories market. Um, so I have a lot of experience in helping brands come to market. Um, so what's a target audience? So basically not everyone likes the same restaurant, the same type of cereal, the same type of movies, the same type of sports activities. Um, everybody's different. So defining a target market enables you to define the core group of people who are going to be the most likely to benefit and purchase your product, which is very important. Um, so once you define your target audience, um, from there, you know, your sales strategy and, and your everything will, and your sales and marketing strategy will be easier to put into place once you've defined your target audience. Um, so what's a target audience? What does that mean? What does that really mean? Basically, a target audience is usually defined by demographics. And demographics are, you know, statistical things that help define people like their behavior and just things like age, education, where they live, what type of job do they have, family status. Um, they're the, the, your target audience would be the most, the group of people who are most likely to want your product, to purchase your product, and really want to use your product and become a repeat customer. Who are those people? For example, if you're, if you're designing a high-end yoga line for women, your target audience would probably be, you know, professional women who do yoga, right? And then you would go into more detail from there. Or if you're designing like a gun bag for men, your target audience would be most likely men that enjoy hunting and shooting and or use guns in a certain age range. So that's kind of an, a really simple example. But what you want to do is if you're starting a fashion brand, you want to get more detailed than that. So you can really narrow it down to who's your ideal customer. And so, like I said, we define that by demographics. So some of the demographics, which I'll go through, I'll explain each one so you understand. Um, some of the demographics include family status. Where are they in their life? Are they, for example, are they um, a, a college kid who lives in the dorm still? Are they young professionals? Maybe it's a guy and his girlfriend that live together and they share rent. Is it a young married couple that has two toddlers? Is it a uh, middle-aged family with three or four kids that are teenagers? Is it an empty nest or someone over the age of 55 that maybe their kids are off to college and they have more free time? Or is it like um, retired age, 65 and up? And what's their family status? Are they married, single, widowed, etc.? cetera? Um, where do they live? That's another demographic. Are they living in urban, suburban, country? Um, for example, uh, maybe they're an empty nester that lives in a high-rise, condo downtown in a big city that their their desires and their lifestyle would be different than say a young married couple with two kids that lives in the suburbs and they are like 15 minutes outside of the city and they have a minivan see so their lifestyle would be totally different um the other thing that we often learn about in defining a target audience is education level are they college educated or high school dropouts are they like master's degree or higher or like doctors um, that's not as important as some of the other demographic information, but it's it's usually like if it's a, it's nice to say, are they, is your ideal customer, do they have a bachelor's degree? It kind of, you know, people that didn't go to college oftentimes have a different lifestyle and a different income level than people that did go to college and get a degree. So that's, it's not as important, but it's nice to, you know, kind of decide is your target audience educated past high school or not. And um, what's the age range of your target audience? I mean, I like to see it between 10 and 15 years. Obviously, if you're if you're designing baby products, you're gonna go by like, okay, so I'm designing this new rattle and my target audience is for kids age three months to, to six months or one year to three years old for like toys or something. But if you're designing apparel or fashion items, usually we usually see like 10 to 15 years. So like you would say, my target audience is young people 18 to 35, or it's uh, women 35 to 45, or 35 to 50, or it's like women, you know, 55 to 75. So usually you see, it's usually 10 to 15 years. 
but if it's like for teens or tweens or children, you could just be as, you could be as, um, you could target as low as the months, how old they are for babies, or like maybe uh, school age children, so uh, age eight to 12. So it just depends on what you're designing, but we like to see an age range in there for your ideal target audience, because I have had clients that say, well, I'm designing this product for all women. Well, let's be honest, the, the shopping, the shopping, the way people shop is different for each age. A 20 year old girl shops at Forever 21, a 55 year old woman shops at Nordstrom's maybe, or Lane Bryant and buys clothes for different reasons. She's not going clubbing on the weekend, so she's not looking for a sexy top, so she's gonna shop at a more conservative store. They have different shopping habits, different buying habits. Um, older people usually wear their clothes longer than younger people. Younger people, I've noticed that teenagers and young women usually, they're, they la their clothes they wear for like six months and they throw them away or they put them in the Goodwill. So people's buying habits are, are different based on their age bracket. Let's be honest, it's true. Um, the other demographics we like to talk about is the age range, we just went over that, is their lifestyle. Are they, are they an active person? I mean, are they a family, for example, if you're looking at a family, is, is the married couple, are they an active people? Like on the weekends, do they go uh, bicycling, do they go to the farmer's market, or do they like to stay home and watch TV and watch Netflix? Um, do they travel quite a bit or do they do quite a bit of international travel or are they mostly homebodies and they maybe go to Disneyland once in their lifetime and they've been to like two states. So that's, you know, the lifestyle will, the lifestyle will affect their buying habits. I mean, if they're an international, if they like to travel internationally, they're more apt to buy certain products than people that just are more homebodies and like to just stay around their hometown. Um, and what they do in their free time will affect also their, shopping and their buying habits. So if they like to hunt and fish and camp, then that customer is gonna be more ideal to buy like a gun holder than the person that doesn't even ever go outside or, or any outdoor activities. So that's just an example of some of the demographics. So demographics are what you use to define your target audience. So why is that important? So I wanna give an example of myself what happened to me and why I found that I lost a lot of money because I didn't have a target audience when I started. So right around 2010, I decided to uh, launch my own handbag line. I had been a handbag designer for about five or 10 years. Um, I finally had the, um, I guess, I guess I finally had the drive or the ambition to do something on my own. I went to Italy, took a six week class in Italian leather. I stayed in Milan for six weeks, really cool experience. Um, went to, I learned all about leather and how much uh, different qualities, how to tell the quality, what kind of skins were good for what kind of products. Just a lot of information. I learned how to design bags like the Italian way. Um, so I came back to Seattle where I was living at the time. I designed a small collection of luxury Italian leather bags for women. Um, I had them manufactured. I actually went to the leather show in Italy, sent the leather to the factory. I had the bags made. Then I decided to do a launch party, you know, and I had worked in the fashion industry in Beverly Hills before. So I knew a lot about PR. I knew a lot about launch parties and all that stuff, you know, so I did it on a smaller scale, but I rented a suite in a five-star hotel downtown Seattle. We had it catered. We had wine and cheese and meat, really nice. I invited all the local fashion bloggers, all the local influencers, but I also invited all my friends, all my old roommates, and I told them to bring their friends. I invited my parents. Um, I had people from all walks of life that showed up at the launch party. And, you know, it was really a show and tell thing, but I had women come up to me at the launch party, oh, your bags are so cute, but I would never spend $300 on a bag or $500 on a bag. I only shop at Target. I don't understand why these are so expensive. And you know, as a designer, I don't have a really big ego. So I was like, okay, whatever. You know, everybody has their own opinion about design, whatever. And then um, we had a really successful launch party for the most part. It was more of a show and tell. And then I started doing um, pop-up shops and I did like special events. I would pay money to be in like little, they used to do these like group pop-up shops where they'd have all these vendors and like, um, have like, it was hard to explain, but I spent a lot of money on different ways to sell. And I spent a lot of money on catering and just inviting people. And I spent about, about six months, I wasted a lot of time because what I realized is I was doing all these events and I would have women coming up to me and a lot of them were like, I would never spend this much money on a bag. I only shop at Walmart, Target, or, you know, less expensive stores. Um, 
they would ask me questions like, what's the difference between leather and fake leather? Or why isn't this vegan leather? And it was just kind of like frustrating because I was trying to educate these clients on the value of luxury leather goods. And I was wasting a lot of money and time. And what my takeaway from that was these aren't my customers. Here I was wasting all this time targeting the wrong women. I wasn't able to sell to every woman. I needed to define my target audience because I was wasting a lot of time trying to reach the wrong women through the wrong channels. And I went away from that experience. You know, I learned a lot by trial and error, but I realized you have to really define your target audience before you go out there and try to sell your product. So what I realized just from that experience was my target audience was professional women who already love to shop at Nordstrom's, the higher end stores. They had a disposable income of like, you know, a couple, at least, you know, a thousand dollars a month spent on fashion. They, they enjoyed uh, better quality products. They already had in their closet, maybe a Chanel, a Louis Vuitton or a Michael Kors or a coach bag. So they were not surprised to spend like $400 on a handbag, $500 on a handbag. That was just normal for them. They appreciated the quality. They already knew about leather. They knew what leather, the value of a leather product. And they just had like a higher taste level and a higher income level. And so I was able to define my target. That my average customer was 35 to 45. They weren't 25 year olds because the 25 year olds didn't have the budget. They weren't over 60 because they, the bags were too fashion forward for more conservative women. So, you know, I wasted a lot of money trying to reach the wrong people. So by defining your target audience early on in the game, you will be able to save money and your sales and marketing strategy will, and even your distribution strategy will be more successful once you have a defined target audience. So I hope that helps. My homework for you guys would be to go home today or, you know, go, go in your office and brainstorm on your ideal target market, write down some notes on where are these people? Where, where do they live? Who's your ideal target audience? Do they live in the suburbs? Do they live in the city? Do they live in the country? How old are they? Are they educated? What's their income level? Middle class, upper class, lower class? Um, what's their education level? What do they like to do on the weekends? And you can actually, I've even told clients to go ahead and write down like a, like a name a person. Like you could say, Okay, it's like for example, the handbags, I could say, well, my, my gal, my ideal target audience is, I would go into great detail about who is she. She is a 35 year old mom. Her name is Jane Smith. She lives in the suburbs. She has two kids. She has a good job. Her husband makes six figures. They have a good household income. She appreciates quality. She normally shops at Nordstrom's or Macy's and she normally buys better quality bags like Michael Kors or Coach or Rebecca Minkoff and maybe she has a Louis Vuitton in there too and I could go into detail about all her activities because that's my ideal customer so you can actually do that for your ideal customer as well you can you can describe this person that doesn't exist who who your what your ideal customer looks like and who are they and then from there you can take that information and make your you can broaden it out a little bit and have like a target audience so that's your homework it's just a brainstorm on who is your target audience think about that and write down some of their demographics. And then from there, we can talk more about how can you use that information to have a marketing strategy, have a distribution strategy, and a sales strategy from that information. Okay, I hope that was helpful, and I'll talk to you later.